In this presentation, we will continue with our comprehensive problem recording the final journal entry of the month, that being related to draws. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info. So we have our three partners, Smith, Jones, and Brown, drawing out cash of 500, 600, and 400, respectively. So what this means is that these owners are taking money out of the company now. So we've seen at the beginning of this process that the owners, when we started the company, put money into the company. And that hopefully only happens like once or a couple times. Hopefully what we hope happens is that money is generated, revenue is earned, as is happening here, 19600 earned. As that happens, then the owners will be taking that money out and the money should be going, being generated from the company, going to the owners in the form of draws. So that's what we will record now. So first question, is cash affected? That's gonna be the first thing that happens here. We're gonna say, yeah, cash is affected. Cash is going down. They're drawing money out of the company. We're taking it out of the business to the personal. We're doing our best to keep the business separate from the personal. So anytime a partner wants money to spend on a personal matter, then of course we should take it out of the partnership and uh, then the the company will the person can spend it in in any way that they would like so here we go we got cash here cash is going to go down so we're going to do the opposite thing to it this is a debit we're going to do a credit so i'll copy cash now i'm going to do something a little bit funny now if we i could put the cash on top and put the credit here and put the credit on top and I recommend doing that when you work on longer journal entries, just to do whatever you have to do to figure it out. I, I happen to know here that there's going to be three draws, so there's going to be four accounts. So I'll try to put it on the bottom still. So, you know, this is going to be one capital account, two capital account, three capital account, and then cash. So we're going to be down here in H26. Right click and paste one, two, three. Again, I'm not going to build this by first trying to think of what's the first debit, what's the second debit, and then go to left to right. I'm going to, I'm going to do what makes sense the easiest thing to do first and cash is usually the easiest thing to do first once i know what cash is doing i can figure out what the rest is doing and if i had to put cash on top and make it a credit i could do that and if i want to reformat it later then you can go back and, and reformat it so let's think about what's the easiest to do first so then we're going to go and i'm going to indent this which is already already done for you most likely which is in the alignment group in the home tab alignment group and increase indenting now the amount is going to be, of course, the 500, the 600, and the 400. So we could put in that that in a couple ways. I could say negative because I want to make it a credit: 500 minus 600 minus 400, which is basically negative 500 minus you know another 600. It's going to make it go down in the from a plus and minus standpoint, and then minus 400 that'll give us 15. So in other words, six plus five plus four is, is 1,500. We want it to be negative. I, another way we could do that, if it makes more sense to you, is to do just an equals and then 500 plus uh, 600 plus 400. But then we want to flip the sign. So to flip the sign, so that would be the 15. To flip the sign, I can't just put a negative in front of the 500 because then it would say it would mean negative 500 plus 600 and you know that would end up to be a positive 100 what we can do is say negative brackets of the whole thing and that'll say hey take this whole thing and flip the sign or in other words take this whole thing and multiply it times negative one and that'll give us the 1500 all right so there's the credit what's the other side going to be it's going to be these owners drawing the money out the owner is the equity section the blue section and we've got these separate capital accounts for each owner are the separate draws accounts. So we got the capital and the draws. So we are going to be posting it to draws. So draws is going to go up. We're going to record and track the amount of draws in a separate account than the capital account. Of those draws accounts not being part of net income, not affecting the income statement, not affecting net income. They're just going to be taken out of the capital account. So you can think of this draws as like a contra uh, capital account, meaning capital usually goes up because it's going to be increased as we generate revenue. It's increased as more uh, cash is put into the company from the owner, which only happens once or twice, but it goes up by net income, hopefully, 
all the time. It'll go down if there's a loss, but hopefully it goes up by income. <laughs> and then we have the draws, which are going to be reducing this account. Now, the draws are similar to like an accounts payable. Notice these are both credits. Accounts payable represents the partnership owing money to a third party. Capital kind of represents, in a sense, what is owed to the owners, the partnership being separate from the owners. And in, in this, we see here Smith is owed by the partnership 40000 If we pay Smith 40000 which we're doing, or whatever we pay Smith, which is uh, 5500 then we're going to reduce how much is owed by that 500 We could do that directly to the capital account, but we typically break it out into draws, which we will then close out to the capital account in the closing process. So draws is, is a pretty straightforward thing, but it's actually one of those areas where most students have the most trouble with because it doesn't happen that often. The draws aren't, aren't as common of a transaction as, say, expense expenses, paying for expenses. And because it doesn't affect net income, we have to see what the relationship is here. So uh, to do this, I'm going to do this all at once. I want to copy draws, draws, draws for Smith, Jones, and Brown. That almost sounds like a song, draws, draws. So in any case, we're going to put our cursor on Smith, hold down control to do this at one time, put our cursor on Jones, and then holding down control, Brown. So now I've highlighted the non-adjacent cells by holding down control. I let go of control, and then right-click on one of those selected areas and copy. And then we're going to put that in H23, right-click and paste, values only, one, two, three. Now, of course, you could type it in there. You could copy and paste them one at a time. Uh, any way it works. That's probably the fastest way if you get used to doing that. So then we're just going to say Smith is 500, 600 Jones, and 400 for Brown. The 5, 6, and 4 add up to the 1,500, which is the credit. So this will be our transaction, and let's record this out now. We've journalized the journal entry in the general journal. We are now in the process of posting. We could do that by making this very small so we can see everything or just scroll around with it at the 130 size we are in. We will be freezing the panes here. I'm going to go all the way to the top. Just go to the right a little bit so that we have the G column flush with the side. Then we're going to put our cursor in cell K1. Go to the View tab. Go to the Windows group. Freeze panes. And then we're going to freeze the pane. As we can see, if we move to the right, then the panes are frozen for columns G through J. Then we're going to scroll down and we're just going to post this out. So here's Smith's account here. Here it is on the uh, trial balance. It's like our second equity account. It's going to be like the second, it will exactly be the second equity account on the GL as well. So here's assets, here's liabilities, and here's the equity in light blue. We're looking for Smith's here. We're going to be in the debit side. Now, Draws are similar to expenses in that they only go one way. They go in the debit direction until we close them out. They're different than expenses in that they don't affect net income. So they're going to act similar. They're going to bring down total equity. They're going to always go up in the debit direction. They're just not going to be part of net income. They're not part of the income statement. So within cell AA21, we're going to say equals and point to that 500 and enter. Zero goes up by 500 to 500. We also see that 500 on the trial balance. If we click just to the left of the frozen panes and use the right arrow to go right, we can see the 500 here on the trial balance. We're out of bounds by 500, of course. And we note that, like, uh, Smith is owed 40,000. We paid Smith 500. 40,000 minus 500 is 39,500 currently owed to Smith. So if we, if the partnership went out of business, in other words, or Smith wanted to draw out more money, then they can, he can drop to 40,000. Now, of course, Smith also is going to be attributed or given or allocated some of this 1,600 after this month as well. So the 40,000 will go up by that as well. Also note that although we have 40,000 here, it doesn't mean that the partner can draw out 40,000 necessarily because we don't even have that much cash. Remember what this means, This all this equity section means assets minus liabilities, which is 119,600. That's what equals all the equity. But it's not all cash, of course, and so it's not like, it's not like Smith can just draw out his entire capital account because a lot of it's in, in equipment here. A lot of it's in equipment and other types of assets. 
it, he can also be, or he or she could also be restricted from draws depending on what the uh, arrangement is in the articles of, of, of the partnership. So when we create the partnership, create the rules, there could be some limitations as well. So, but in terms of liquidation, you would think that uh, he'd get the 40,000 minus the five plus whatever was allocated at the sixth of the net income at this time. Okay, next one, we've got Jones capital account. Here's Jones here or draws account. Here's Jones draws account on the trial balance. It's gonna be in the same order on the GL. So we're gonna scroll to the right here are the assets. Here's the liabilities, here's the capital accounts. And there's Brown, here's Jones is up top. Here's Jones. So we're gonna be in the debit side. We're in cell uh, AE9. AE9, we're gonna pick up that 600. So within AE9, we're gonna say equals. We're gonna scroll down just a bit. We're gonna click on that 600 in I24 and enter. So that brings the zero up by 600 to 600 in the debit direction. We can also see that 600 on the trial balance. If we click just to the left of the frozen panes and then click right on the keyboard with the arrows, there's the 600. So in other words, we owed Jones 50,000 plus whatever the net income is, we haven't allocated yet. We paid Jones 600, therefore Jones is now owned 49,400 plus the net income that we have not yet allocated to the capital account for Jones. Then we have Brown's draws. Brown's draws, that's the last capital account we have before the income statement. It's gonna be the last capital account before the income statement on the GL as well. So we're gonna scroll to the right, we've got cash, we got liabilities, we got capital. We got Jones's uh, draws down here, and that's in AE21. So within cell AE21, we're gonna say equals. We're gonna point to that 400 in uh, I25, enter. Bringing the zero up by 400 to 400, that 400 then also can be found on the trial balance. So we're gonna click just to the left of the frozen panes, go right one time, there's the 4,000. So once again, uh, Brown was owed 10,000 and um, plus whatever the allocation of net income will be, minus the 4,000 we pay Jones owed 9,600 plus the net income allocation, whatever that will be. Now we need to record the last component cash paid out. Note again, we probably paid this out in terms of separate checks, obviously, and we might record them separately, but we can also record them in terms of just a journal entry to track the transactions in one journal entry. So that's what we're doing here. We're kind of combining one journal entry. We could have had three saying Smith's draws, debit, credit, cash, 500, Jones draws, 600, debit, credit, cash, 600, uh, draws for Brown, 400, credit, cash. We're just gonna lump it all together here for our journal entry purposes. Okay, so and then we're gonna go to cash. That's gonna be our first account on the trial balance. Also the first account on the general ledger, of course, first and favorite. And we'll scroll to the right and we wanna pick this up. So this is a credit, credit side. We're in cell P21, where we will say equals, point to that 1,500, bring in the 37,600 up by 1,500 to 36,100. That then will also be found on the trial balance. If we go just to the left of those frozen panes and click right once on uh, the keyboard, there's the 36,100. So again, if we go through this then, uh, what happened? Well, cash went down, we paid cash. Who did we pay it to? The owners. So we paid it to the owners here, and that's gonna decrease equity, but it's not part of net income. And that's really important because note what could happen, common things, problems with partnerships, is that uh, we, if we gave money to the partnership and then we put it down here as an expense, it would take down net income and it would alter the, the effect on the partners when we allocate that net income here. It would also decrease taxes probably because net income would be decreased uh, improperly by that. Uh, if we also, common problem, if uh, we didn't have a draw, say Smith or Jones or Brown decided to just pay something out of the partnership, out of the partnership account, and then record it as like miscellaneous expense down here or something like that, then again, same thing. We would have an expense here that was really a personal draw bringing down net income. And then that lower net income would then be allocated to the remaining partners, all the partners, and it would affect all the partners. In essence, the partnership then, that the three partners would be uh, carrying an expense for one partner. They, they would be splitting the expense of the partnership 
allocating the net income for that expense out. It would also lower taxes improperly because it would lower net income and it would lower taxes. So the, the, what you want, what we want to do is whenever we have a personal expenses, record the draw, take it out of the partnership, separate the business and personal, and um, and then record it as a draw. Make sure it's a capital account so that uh, it's in the in the equity section and not being part of net income. At the end of the day, in the uh, closing process, we'll close out the draws account to the capital account. So at the end of the day, this capital account will represent what is owed in the post-closing trial balance to the partners on a book value basis. All temporary accounts, including revenue and expense accounts, and the draws accounts will be zero in the post-closing trial balance. So that's going to be it for the month here of transactions. This is the most significant component of our accounting cycle because we're recording the, the transactions. That's what we do for most of the time period. And now we're going to go to the adjusting entries next time. And that's going to be recording those end of period adjustments that we need to have in order to make the financial statements, in order to make the best decision making processes, in order to have our numbers as close to an accrual basis as possible. For more accounting information and accounting courses, visit our website at accountinginstruction.info.